Hello, uh, this is Political Forum for Wednesday, August 21st. Uh, we welcome today as our special guest, uh, State Representative L.G. Sims uh, from the 34th District. Uh, thank you for joining us again on Political Forum. Thanks for having me, Rod. Uh, I'm Rod Joy, a board member at Can TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live, interactive program that allows you the opportunity to have direct conversation with your elected officials. Uh, during the next 25 minutes or so, we hope you have an opportunity to learn more about uh, Representative Sims, uh, the key issues facing uh, the state of Illinois. Um, above all, this program is really about uh, encouraging a vibrant sense of civic engagement in Chicago. So your questions, your comments are essential to the program. Uh, we invite you to, to call in at 312-738-1060. Uh, Representative Sims, uh, for those that uh, don't know you, maybe you could just uh, say a little bit about uh, yourself sure. and your uh, district. Absolutely. Well, thanks again. And thanks again for, to Can TV for having me. Uh, I always love doing this program. Uh, it's an informative way to, to interact with voters and constituents, and uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm, my, again, my name is LG Sims. I'm the state representative from the 34th district. Uh, the district uh, extends from the south side of Chicago into the southern suburbs including the suburbs of uh, Cal City, Burnham, South Holland, Lansing, Linwood, and then over into uh, suburban Will and Kankakee County, including Beecher, Moments, Piatone, Mantino, uh, all the uh, different points in between. It's about 55 miles end to end. Uh, I was elected uh, last year in uh, November of 2012, uh, and I, I was actually appointed in uh, August of 2012 to fill a vacancy uh, created by, was by the resignation of uh, former Representative St uh, Constance Howard. And uh, since then, I've been working a great deal uh, in the Springfield about uh, issues that are important in our communities, making sure that we've got you know, great schools and art for our children, we've got safe streets and safe communities, and wonderful jobs for our communities. So uh, I've been very blessed to serve the people of the 34th District in the state of Illinois. Terrific. And so uh, I think we just passed your one-year anniversary. We did. In your current uh, role. We did. Uh, while you've been in that role for just over a year, mm -hmm. you're no stranger to public service. No, no. Uh, a, a lot of people uh, steer clear of uh, public service and politics. What, what inspired you to get involved in, in uh, public life? Really, it was it was about making a difference. You know, I, I've I've had I had the great pleasure of having some wonderful mentors, starting with my parents, and they taught us the importance of giving back. And for me, it was, you know, this was the way I was able to make a, make a difference. And policy was, you know, that, that way I saw the quickest way to be able to make a difference. And uh, so I started off working in Springfield uh, for the Illinois Senate Democrats. Uh, I was their budget director for about eight years. Uh, I was on the staff for 10. Uh, then I, I left Springfield, went to law school. Uh, I represented clients in Springfield uh, in a number of different capacities. And then uh, the opportunity to represent uh, the 34th district presented itself, and I, I thought I saw this as another opportunity to really engage individuals and uh, support my community. Terrific! You, you mentioned the importance of mentors, and that you had uh, mentors in your household. Absolutely. Uh, you also have a connection with uh, former Senate President Emil Jones, yes. who's known as a, a mentor to, to, to many political oh, figures absolutely. and a political godfather to President Obama. Oh, yeah. Can you say a little bit about your relationship well, with the he, former Senate president? He, he the, the, the former Senate president, uh, he, he really, he invested in me and he invested in a lot of young people uh, when no one else would. Um, I remember the uh, the time when, when he appointed me budget director uh, for the Senate Democrats. I was about, I was 24 years old. and uh, 24 years tw young. That's 24 years young, at, you know, managing a 50 plus billion dollar budget. Uh, for in thinking about you know th for setting policies and procedures for the caucus, and there were some folks who questioned that decision, uh, but for for the Senate President, in his mind, he wanted to show that uh, there were young people who could do the job, and he invested in me, and uh, then from that that relationship also grew my mentorship and relationship with Senator Don Trotter, who's the Senate po the Senate point person on budget, and uh, Senator Trotter and I still to to office together to this day. Uh, he's been a wonderful mentor of mine. And uh, someone who also continues to invest in me and other young people, uh, Cook County Commissioner Stan Moore, uh, who also offices with me, um, we we started together on the staff. So we, we you know, working under Senate, Senate Pre former Senate President Jones with, for the Senate, Senate Democrats, and uh, it we, was having having mentors who invest in young people. It's important, you know. Right before I came today, I was at an event uh, with some young people, with some wonderful young people. Who are talking about you know trying to stem the tide of violence in our communities, 
and it does my heart good to be able to see you know young people who are who who, who want that mentorship, who want who want who want to be who want to exhibit leadership, and I think it's uh, it's that's what we need in our communities right now. Terrific! You're watching Political Forum. Uh, this is a live interactive call-in program. Uh, our special guest tonight is State Representative L. G. Sims from the 34th. Uh, legislative district. Uh, please call in and join the conversation 312-738-1060. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, good evening. I know that uh, Councilman Howard before you was really trying to uh, bridge the digital divide and with about one-third of Chicagoans without constant access to the internet. Um, is bridging this uh, divide is it important to you? Absolutely. I mean, I think in order for us to have the opportunity for individuals to, to increase their, their their educational experiences, you've got to have the access to 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 the digital, to the to the World Wide Web. There's a wealth of information. You know, I, I know uh, I, I watch my kids as uh, even today as they're as they they'll start you know, go if you want to learn something, go right to the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, before we would have to go to to the library and uh, to go and fi find encyclopedias, and that, that was a uh, one, the, the, those encyc the encyclopedias were books that got, other than the Bible in our house, got the most use uh, when I was a kid. But now, you know, children don't have that. Uh, they they have to they can go right to the web, and it's right there. I think uh, it's a, it's certainly uh, an experience that we've got we've got to invest in. It's a it's a tool that increases our children's educational experience. Terrific. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, Senator Trotter mm -hmm. and uh, sharing offices or a level of collaboration. Oh, yeah. I think you have a new district office. Yes, yes. Uh, that's conveniently located with other uh, elected officials. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our, our viewers a little bit sure. about where you're located now? We, we've moved to uh, 8658 South Cottage Grove, Suite 404B. Um, and, and in that office, you've got myself, you've got State Senator Don Trotter, and you've got State uh, or Cook County Commissioner Stan Moore. And across the street, you've got uh, State Representative Marcus Evans and uh, Alderman Michelle Harris, uh, just right across the street on Cottage Grove. And then around the corner, you've got Alderman uh, Rod Sawyer from the 6th Ward. Down the street on on, uh, on Michigan, you've got Alderman Anthony Beal from the 9th Ward. And then you've got uh, uh, Congresswoman Robin Kelly right down the street from him. So we've got a little government center right there kind of a one-stop shop for constituents. Terrific. And um, tell our viewers a little bit about why uh, they might want to visit your office and what kind of services uh, sure. y you can provide. Oh, it, just about everything. We, we've, we, 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 we take on all, all issues, uh, we, from anything from health care to education to job training. Uh, we've, helped, we've hosted uh, a, number of, a number of fairs and events. Recently, uh, we hosted our, our community, community health fair and back-to-school rally. And we had over over 500 families who came by, and uh, we got health screenings for the children and, and the and the and the, and the seniors, uh, school supplies for for the students. It was a wonderful event. Uh, partnership with uh, some of our community partners, including Walmart and uh, Cook County Department of Public Health. Uh, so we, we had we, we've had some a lot of events that have been very very helpful. Uh, community shred days, and you can learn a lot about uh, government by just coming in and looking at the resources that are right there. I would also encourage individuals to use my website. Uh, it's it's www.replgsims34.com. Uh, it's again, it's a wonderful uh, tool for individuals to to find out information about things that are going on in the district, events, uh, press about uh, what's what what has been what's going on in the state, uh, legislation that's been signed. So it, we we encourage individuals to use that as a resource as well. Terrific. So let's talk about what's going on in the, sure. going on sure. in the state and uh, legislation that's been signed. Um, tell the viewers a little bit about uh, your views about this recently completed legislative session. I, you know, I, I'm I'm extremely excited about uh, this past legislative session. Um, I'm, I'm humbled by the number by the amount of work that's been done in Springfield, and uh, the the impact that, that I've been having. Uh, you know, I, when as I was, you know, as I started this run for for office, you know, I talked about you know some of the, the experiences I've had and how that would translate into tangible evidence of uh, tangible things for for the district. And uh, since I since I've been in office, I'm, I'm proud to say I've uh, I've had you know I've had this the fourth in the Illinois House. I've had the fourth most active session of any member of the Illinois House. Uh, I've passed more legislation than any other member. Uh, that has the fourth most legislation passed, and as a freshman, that says something. Uh, you know, I was the governor just signed you're, one. You're of my a red shirt freshman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what that's what a lot of folks say. It's like you're not a regular freshman. 
Uh, you know, and the governor just paid me the ultimate compliment as he signed one of my bills in the law recently. Uh, he called me the rookie of the year. He said, you know, he's starting to see me so much at bill signings that uh, that he's, he's starting to think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling with him. He said, we're probably just going to start carpooling. Uh, but, you know, and I, I've had, uh, we were looking at this recently. Uh, of the since, in, during this legislative session, I've, I've been a part of over 70 laws that have been uh, 70 bills that have been signed in the law this session, and I, that's, a, that's a true testament to make, getting in there and really starting to get things done. Terrific. Um, you mentioned Governor Quinn, hmm? and on July 10th, uh, Governor Quinn uh, cut uh, paychecks for yeah. all 177 members of the Illinois General Assembly until we have quote unquote comprehensive pension mm -hmm. reform. Mm -hmm. Uh, pension reform dominates the debate sure. right now uh, in Springfield. Um, how you holding up six weeks <laughs> in without a paycheck, and w what's what's the pathway forward on pensions? Well, I think um, ultimately, I think the the conference committee is, is doing doing some wonderful work, and I think they'll 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 get to they'll, they'll get to a bill in the compromise that 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 provides us with a path forward to making sure that we've got. Uh, reform that that make that make that's, that covers a couple of things. You know, as I've talked about pension reform as an issue, I've talked about you know really three things: uh, a solution that's comprehensive, one you know, so I don't want to do something that's piecemeal, uh, one that's that's fair. Uh, you've got employees who paid into the system, and I don't believe it's fair to take the take the pay take away from them the resource they paid into the system through no fault of their own, and one that's constitutional. Uh, you know, I think that, you know when you look at the Illinois Constitution, it's very clear. On pension benefits cannot be diminished. Cannot be diminished. Their contractual obligation, and I think you, when when you, when you look at that as a backdrop, uh, you having a, a a pension solution that fits those criteria, I think is what we're, what all of us are looking for. Um, you know, my my challenge with the governor's decision uh, and uh, Governor Quinn, and I've talked about talk about many issues. Uh, my my my, I think it's a very slippery slope to go down uh, when you when you. When you when you impose those kinds of uh, restrictions on on a co-equal branch of government, um, and the the framers of our constitution are, were very clear in terms of the separation of the separation of of powers between the equal branches of government, and uh, I think it's very dangerous when you make one branch of government uh, subservient to another. We only have a few minutes for this program and <laughs> talk about a slippery slope, <laughs> the, the separation of powers in Illinois politics. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, this is a political forum. It's a live, interactive call-in program. Uh, our guest today is State Representative L.G. Sims from the 34th uh, District. Um, I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi. Thanks for taking my phone call. I was just curious, what's the difference between expungement uh, versus sealing someone's records? The, an expungement is basically you're, you're making you're making the record as if it never existed, as if the crime never existed. Uh, sealing, the law enforcement can ult, can ultimately find the record, but the the records have to be unsealed. Uh, so if you expunge it, you're taking it off the off the person's record. But if it's if it's sealed, it still exists. And that was that's the difference between that's why many law enforcement officers and law enforcement agencies supported the sealing the sealing of the records, whereas they they are they're generally opposed to expungements. And uh, you mentioned uh, having a hand in over 70 pieces of legislation. Mm -hmm. I think one of the measures that you backed that was recently signed into law mm -hmm. uh, has to do with sealing yes. the records of uh, nonviolent mm -hmm. offenders. And so to piggyback on the caller's question, can you say a little bit about that measure sure. and, and, and why you supported it? Well, tip, as, as, you, as we found, you know, many, many, many individuals in our community, just, you know, they, they've it made made one one mistake, uh, and they're nonviolent offenders. But that that mistake has affected their ability to earn a lot, earn a living for themselves and their families. And I believe that you know, in order for them to get a second chance, uh, it makes it makes good it's good public policy to give those individuals a second chance by you know making if they are nonviolent offenders, allowing them to get get those records sealed so they can they can go out and get gainful gainful employment for themselves and their families. Uh, when you when we are putting individuals back to work, we're going to stop seeing a lot of the uh, the, the ills that are plaguing our communities. Uh, when when we've, we've already we've got unemployment that's over 10 per, that's oh, that's nearing 10 percent in, in the state of Illinois. It's 9.2 percent in the last uh, the last uh, p report that came out. Uh, when when we start to deal with some of these issues, I think we'll really start to see, see our community start to turn around. Terrific. Uh, you're watching Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we invite you to call in with your questions and comments for Representative Sims. Uh, we're at 
312-738-1060. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, hello. I wanted to know what uh, Representative Soon say a few words about concealed carry and how adequate or inadequate you think the legislation ended up being in its final form. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I, I did not support the concealed carry bill that uh, that was passed by the General Assembly. I think there were there were a number of issues that I saw with with that with the, with the bill. Um, one, it, it's it seems to me that if you if you have a if you have a gun, uh, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want that gun in places uh, where, where alcohol is served. Um, I, I also I had some I had some concerns about the ability of an individual to take a gun into a prohibited place, a school, a church, a government building. And, and even if you are a repeat offender of doing that, you never you are you are never going you never get a felony under this under the under the measure that passed. Uh, that's a concern for me. Uh, I, I think that uh, we've got to make sure that we are deterring individuals from taking guns in the schools, uh, in their prohibited places, where there there are in, in the sensitive places where people are, are vulnerable. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I also I was very happy to support legislation that the governor just signed, calling for a universal background check. Uh, and, and, the, and to call for individuals to, rep to report lost or stolen handguns within 72 hours. Uh, I think that m it makes sense. Uh, if you're going to have a, a handgun at your disposal, you should use that gun responsibly and safely. Terrific. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi. Yes, thank you for taking my call. Um, I had a question about some of the recent state legislation passed to Illinois roadways. I understand there's been a change to the speed limit in some areas, as well as um, rumored that there's also been a change with cell phones and who can talk on them and when you can talk on them. I was just hoping that perhaps a representative could speak to those and maybe also share how he thought that would make Illinois roads safer. Sure. Well, the the first first bill you talked about was the increase in the, in the state speed limit to 70 miles per hour. Uh, you know, I think when you look at the the speed limit for Illinois in rural areas, and we've had we've been having some discussions. And I think there's some confusion uh, amongst uh, some some members of the General Assembly and the governor in terms of what uh, those speed limits what, what those speed limits look look like or will look like. Um, I think we're going to have to we're going to have to have some some clarifying legislation and discussions when we get back to Springfield. Uh, but when you look at the speed limit for Illinois versus our our neighboring states, it puts us at a competitive competitive disadvantage. Uh, when Indiana and Wisconsin or Missouri have speed limits that are higher than ours, but then you, uh, your speed limit is lower in Illinois. Uh, I think w when we're when we're talking about making ourselves competitive, we want to make sure that we give ourselves every advantage. Uh, and that's that was one of the that's one of the items that uh, we've looked at in terms of increasing the speed limit. And the other the other uh, piece of legislation that the caller was talking about is the ban on on cell phone usage. Uh, so now, just like in, in here in Chicago. Where there's a there's a ban on using uh, handheld phones, uh, you have that you have that same ability statewide now. So you won't have some some uh, municipalities where there is a ban, and some municipalities where they're not. Um, right now, everyone will have you have to use a hands-free device to operate a phone in, in your car, uh, whether, whether that's Bluetooth or um, or or some other device, some hands-free device. And you probably spend a lot of time on <laughs> Illinois roadways, I, commuting I do. from Chicago I to do. Springfield. Oh yeah. Do you have a uh, heavy foot on the pedal, <laughs> I, and do you have your hands-free device? I, I have. I have my. I do. I have my hands-free. I, I actually have a. I have a hands-free device. I have several. So if one goes out, I've got another. I got a backup. You don't use them while you're I, driving. No, I don't. I don't use them while I'm driving. But I've got. Uh, I've got several. Several. Several hands-free devices. Terrific. Um, we talked a little bit about guns, mm -hmm. and uh, senseless violence has sure. dominated the headlines and, and news coverage in Chicago. Uh, you're on uh, the the firearms uh, committee mm -hmm. uh, in Springfield, the subcommittee. Um, you mentioned a little bit about how, you know, just like alcohol and cars don't mix, sure. that alcohol and guns don't mix. Talk sure. a little bit about that subcommittee and uh, some of your work there. In oh, absolutely. You know, it was, it was, it was actually fascinating work uh, to hear uh, some of the different perspectives from uh, individuals from urban areas and suburban areas and rural areas of the state and how, how, they, how we deal with, you know, how we, how we have a different perspective on, how, on guns and, and the use of guns. Uh, some individuals... You know, you, you've talked about you know some some individuals talk can, would come in and testify that they that they've owned you know hundreds of guns, mm -hmm. and you know some other other individuals come in and say they they absolutely abhor guns. Uh, it, it was again it was fascinating work to work through this as a topic, 
and this session in particular, knowing after the Seventh Circuit made its ruling that we'd have to pass a concealed carry law for the state, was particularly uh, it was particularly timely to be on that on that uh, on that committee. And uh, we had some very robust discussions, and uh, I, I was I was very pleased to be I'm very pleased to be on that committee, and thankful to be appointed. Terrific. Uh, you're watching Political Forum. Uh, this is a live interactive call-in program. Uh, our guest today is State Representative L.G. Sims. Uh, we invite you to join the conversation. Uh, please uh, phone in with your questions and comments. Um, we talked a little bit about transportation. Sure, sure. Uh, You, I think, also play an active role on the, the uh, mass transit mm -hmm. uh, uh, committee yep. in Springfield. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the challenges that have been in the headlines related to mass transit sure. uh, in Illinois and <laughs> your work on that committee. Well, yeah, I currently serve as the, the vice chairman of the House Mass Transit Committee, a uh, committee I'm very pleased to, pleased to work on. Uh, when, you, we, we, when you talk about uh, again, economic development and how you how you how you how you invest in it. I think mass transit is one of our biggest strategies, and I'm very pleased about some of the work we've been able to do. I uh, was I met with me with some of the mass transit agencies recently. You know, I, th I think a many many of them are reeling from these uh, the stories that have been coming out lately, um, some of the negative discussions that have, that have been occurring, and uh, you know I think as we as we go forward over the next couple of days and weeks and months ahead. Uh, having those discussions about how we clean up the system, system-wide, uh, you know, from from Metro to RTA to Pace, uh, all of, all those systems, making sure that we're all on the same page, and the the goals that we have for mass transit are really to make sure that it it does it does what it's supposed to, do, and that's invest in people. Terrific. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi. Uh, Representative, I wanted to know if you would support an increase in the minimum wage in the state of Illinois. Well, I, again, I think as we're talking about how we're going to be competitive in a, from a business standpoint, I think we've got to look at how, how, that, how that impacts us uh, from a competitive standpoint, uh, how, wh whether or not we are going to, as you look at uh, the minimum wage in our surrounding states and surrounding areas, how that, what, what, kind of, what, in, what, advantage that, what advantage or disadvantage that puts us at. Um, I have the, the great pleasure of serving a district that, that butts up against and borders Indiana. Uh, but I know there are many individuals who have the same who have the same pleasure, uh, whether it's Indiana or Wisconsin or uh, Iowa or Michi or Iowa or Missouri, Kentucky, uh, and I think we we have to really we have to look at that as an as an as an issue in terms of what it does to the competitive nature of our state. Terrific. Uh, speaking of issues, uh, we had another uh, question come in from a caller. Uh, I, I will do my best uh, to communicate the question. If I get it wrong, call back. <laughs> Um, but the question is, is Illinois reviewing the use of small aircraft, and then I also have in parentheses, uh, drones? There, were, there was uh, legislation that came before us uh, this, this past session dealing with the use of drones uh, in, in, in Illinois from, a, from, a, from, a, from, from not only a law enforcement standpoint, but also from, a, from an economic development and farming standpoint, agricultural standpoint. Uh, we, yes, so the short answer is yes, there, there have been some measures to look at how Illinois looks at and uses and utilizes and, and legis or legislates the use of uh, small aircraft and drones uh, here, uh, but again, it's it's how you how we how we're going how that how those aircraft play into the overall structure and overall strategy for what we're doing in the state. Terrific. Uh, in the time that we have remaining, let's talk a little bit more about economic development. Sure. Uh, the top three issues for many uh, policymakers these days is jobs, jobs, jobs. And I, more jobs. <laughs> I, I know you play an active role sure. in convening jobs uh, f uh, forums in, in your district, but mm -hmm. talk a little bit about uh, uh, jobs and the jobs plan in, in your district. Sure. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, this, this past session we were, we were able to get a lot of things done uh, from an economic development standpoint. Uh, one of the proudest moments that I've, I've been able to participate in uh, as a member of the General Assembly was that you know we were able to put over 6,000 young people to work this summer. Uh, you know, individuals from uh, eight, from the ages of 14 to eight, from 24, uh, college students, high school students, they were they were able to do something positive this summer. Uh, not only not only were they able to go and earn a paycheck, but they were able to learn responsibility. And I think that was that's something that's I can't tell you the number of number of young people came to me and said, you know, thank you for that opportunity. And uh, I was out the other day playing with my girls, and a parent walked by and said, you know, I appreciate the uh, the opportunity for my my child to have that job this summer, uh, because it gave her some responsibility. It, it allowed her to 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 really invest in herself. 
Uh, and those are the those are the kinds of activities that really make a difference for me. Terrific. Uh, you've been watching Political Forum. Uh, we'd like to thank our guest today, State Representative L.G. Sims. Uh, we believe that an informed and engaged citizenry uh, is vital to a healthy democracy. Uh, so on behalf of CAN TV, uh, thank you for tuning in, uh, for calling in, uh, and we invite you to join us next week, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, for the next edition of Political Forum. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.